Okay, so on the homework for today, guys, dealing with the mathematical resolution of vectors. So there's going to be a couple of things you're going to do. You're going to, in part, do what we were dealing with yesterday as far as the graphical resolution. So you will be asked to draw in a couple of vector diagrams, which is just very good practice because we're going to wind up using vectors for uh, a good portion of kinematics so and dynamics. So what we're going to use here... All right, uh, first thing first, dog runs five meters to the right and then comes back two meters to the left. Draw a vector diagram. So I'm just going to go to shapes real quick, insert a line. Okay, I'm saying five to the right. And then the dog comes back, two to the left, somewhere like that. Make my little arrows. All right, I'm going like, to put a text box in. This guy is two meters. This guy was five meters. Okay, using the tip to tail method, determine how far the dog moves from its initial position. Well, if it goes, all right, uh, five right and then two left, it's going to be a total of how far? So this one, they literally just want you to just add in another drawing. Okay, the tip to tail method. Don't worry about that. And then, I mean, you guys are smart enough to know it's opposite directions you subtract. And then when they say find it, the displacement uh, mathematically, that's what they're referring to. If they're in opposite directions, you subtract them. If they're in the same direction, you add them. And then if we have a net X and net Y direction, we were going to use the equation. So for this one, you get this is all they're they're asking you to do. Five minus two is three. All right, um, and we should know that it's going to the right because five was the larger magnitude. Okay, um, we go seven north, five south, two north. Seven north, five south, and then up. Oh, shit, I mean, oh, from that position again, it goes up by two. Okay, now you can add the little text to it so you know what the heck's going on. You got seven kilometers right here. This one was five kilometers. This one was two kilometers. My text right now is a little bit bigger, so you guys can see. You don't have to make it as big. Okay, so that's what they wanted to do. All right. Um, use the tip to tail method to determine how far the passenger travels from their initial position. So basically, like, they're saying, oh, if you were to drag these and move them kind of like all on top of one another, you're going seven up, five back down, and then a two from there. So seven up, five down, and then two back up. So what should my value there be? And in what direction? So you could do this in two different ways. Guys, you could um, go right set in order, seven to the uh, north, five to the south, and then two back to the north. How I would do it, and me, my preference personally, is I'm going to add everybody in the same direction first. So the seven plus the two, which would give me nine kilometers to the north, and then five south. And since it's opposite direction, then I can subtract. So nine up and five down, opposite directions would give me four. Nine was the higher magnitude, so it's going to go to the north. So my guy here would be four kilometers to the north. And pretty much find the result. Mathematically is pretty much what we just said. Um, you can show it again either way. You can do five, seven minus five plus two, seven plus two minus five, however you prefer, however it makes more sense to you and you're more comfortable with. So for me, how I would personally do it, I'd be like seven plus two is nine 
dollars north, and then I make a second text box over here. From nine minus right five because the five is now to the south. Opposite directions we subtract, and that's going to give me a total number of four. And since nine was the higher magnitude, it, that's going to be the direction that our uh, resultant is going to be in the northern direction. Okay. So we got a rocket that is launched from an initial height of 1.2 meters and then reaches a height of 14 meters and falls to the ground. Draw a vector diagram of this movement. Okay. So it's being launched from an initial height of 1.2 meters. Okay. So if this is the ground, this initial height here. One point two meters off the ground, the rocket. I'm not gonna attempt to draw a rocket because it's gonna look awful. So from there it says the rocket is going to reach a height of fourteen meters and then fall to the ground. So at the very, very top of this piece, we have 14 meters. And then what happens? Reaches a height of 14 and then comes back down and hits the ground. So that's another how far did it move? It's another 14 meters. OK. How far away vertically? does the rocket land from its initial position? OK, so its initial position is right here, this 1.2 meters. But it's asking how far does it land. So if the rocket was here, let's just call this little box here the rocket. And up here, make it like that. Oh god, no, no, no. Ah, uh, okay. Did not think that was going to happen. Where's the undo button? That's a house. Whatever. It's a rocket. Let it be. Um, so the rocket is starting, let's just say, on some kind of little ledge here. It's 1.2 meters off the ground. It shoots up, reaches a height of 14 meters, and then falls back down to the ground. So how far away vertically does the rocket land from its initial position because we're saying land right if it was 1.2 meters off the ground and it lands on the ground it's now below its initial position does that make sense right so if you launched this rocket off your table and then it shoots up in the air hits the ground would it make sense that it's now below where it was initially good okay so how far below is it going to be this 1.2 meters. So because it's below, we can say negative 1.2 meters. And that means it's going to be, all right, below or in this case, I guess, you know, if we were talking just cardinal directions, it'd be south, but we're going to say the negative 1.2 meters, all right, or you can say 1.2 meters below its original position. Find the resultant displacement mathematically. Okay, um, so what we have here is use just green real quick. Can somebody tell me how I would find the value for the just the green arrow if this piece up top 
right? If that's 14 meters. How can I find the value for just the green arrow? Bingo. Subtract 1.2 from 14, which is what? That sounds right to me. Okay. Now, does everyone, hopefully everyone understands why this arrow is the way it is, because the rocket here is 1.2 meters above the ground, shoots up, reaches a total max height of 14 meters, then falls to the ground. So this 1.2 meters here, the rocket never actually travels that from the ground originally. So we can't just say 14 up and 14 down. So it'll be 12.8 up minus 14 meters. And so that's where we get the this negative 1.2 meters from. Got it? Hopefully that makes sense. I think it does. Does that make sense? Right? Dope. Sweet. Okay, you guys, when, it, when it's saying use a component table to solve, you don't need to use a component table. Just FYI. Um, while completing an obstacle course, he goes 30 meters north, 20 south, 5 north at the end of the course. How far away? Okay. You guys, again, that's just one dimension. That's like straight up and down. So same direction you add, opposite directions you, uh, you subtract. We're going to skip to something that has multiple right, dimensions here. Two dimensions. So we got two kids chasing each other on a playground, running 10 meters north, 6 east, and 2 south at the end of the game. How far are they from where they started? Again, it says you can use a component table, but you can if you, you, know, you want. To me, it's easier not to. Does that make sense? Oh, I don't want green. Get away. Bam. Okay, so we went 10 meters north. We went six meters east and then two meters south. Oh, that's gross. Uh, six meters east and two meters south. Yahtzee. Okay, um, so how far are the kids away from where they started? They started here, and then, dang it, I thought I hit the black here. Thank you. So they're going to wind up right there, this guy right there, from where they started. All right, so again... What they want you to do here is figure out the net X and net Y thing. So you guys can figure that out without using a table, or if you want to go back and watch the video and show how they, they use the table. Like it was like right about here. All right, the problem is very similar. But for me personally, what I'm going to just say is, all right, same direction, add, opposites, subtract, right? Do we have anything in the same direction? Nah. Do we have anything in the opposite directions? Yeah, we have the 10 and 2. So 10 minus 2 is going to equal 8. What direction is 8 going to be? Well, if 10 was north and 2 was south, it's going to be 8 meters north. Okay, and that's going to be my, that's my, my net x or y direction. That's the vertical component. All right, and then I have this dude here, six meters east. Now, since now we have a net x direction and a net y direction, you can't do add or subtract. You have to use the equation. All right, uh, we got our a squared plus b squared. So, yeah, we're going to plop it in, all right, and then solve. So 
doesn't matter who is what, 8 squared plus your 6. All right, and you can use the free calculator up here. We got 8 squared plus 6 squared. All right, 100. All right, hopefully, you guys know the square root of that. Again, if you don't want to, or you go then hit the square root button here. Oh, crap, I forgot what number. It shows it right there. Or you can just hit answer, and it will take literally the A and S means the calculation all right, from your last um, answer, or the answer from your last calculation. Uh, and equals, boom, 10, awesome sauce. So we are going to be left with ten meters in what direction? All right. So we have a combination. You're going to use the combination of your nor uh, your y and x direction. So northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. We have a north and an east here. So we're going to go north and east. And boom, donezo. Okay. You're going to complete the last couple. Okay. Uh, actually, let's just take a gander at six real quick. Local high school is installing new bleachers at a stadium and must add handrails to meet code. Students know that the bleachers are eight meters tall and they measure the depth of the bleachers at seven meters. How long must the handrails be to go along the bleachers from top to bottom? Or from bottom to top? All right, you know what? You guys will do seven and eight along with the other couple that we didn't do here. Uh, I'm going to just say we're going to negate six. Don't worry about doing six. So you guys can just kind of cross six out for today. All right. 